Good morning. So today I'm cooking lunch. I've got pretty much the same as ever. Bok choy, um, kohlrabi, salmon. Let's see if I've got some mushrooms. I can't remember if I have. Uh, nope, I haven't, but I've got some cauliflower, so I want some cauliflower. I'll get the beans. Right, so <clears throat> today I wanted to talk about um, handling stress because I've been with stress lately. Well, there's been like a few things that have caused me to reflect, and those reflections have caused me stress. And so, there's a thing about stress. Obviously, you've probably heard it all to death about, you know, fight and flight, uh, the zebras don't get cancer and all stuff like this. You know, so, stress is produced by cortisol. You know, you, you feel you, your body gets ready to, you know, take some action and stuff like that. And so this all used to help us, you know, when we were living on, well, whatever, the Serengeti or, you know, like, you know, wild animals, they basically have some kind of stress response to some immediate threat. Now, in human life, we don't have that many immediate threats. So, you know, although you've got something like, you're probably not stressed out by the thought of, I don't know, someone coming to your home and bailing it or something. I mean, maybe you are, I don't know. But my stresses, for instance, are more to do with how secure is my job? Can I pay my mortgage? Uh, you know, how are my kids getting on at school? You know, all that. And so obviously, a stress response when you're in a fight or flight situation is a very good thing because if you've got to fight off some attacker or whatever, you know, you want to be pumped and, you know, ready for it. But you know, you tell me, me worrying about the economy and, you know, whether, you know, how stable is my job, my sector, my whatever, how is me being ready for the fight actually going to help me change that situation or, you know, understand it better? I mean, basically it just, it just won't. So, <clears throat> because my body physiologically, well, everyone's body, doesn't know the difference and it's up to us to basically make the difference. So, you know, how, how, how does that work? Well, I mean, I've talked, it, there's different things that can come up. So, like in my, in my past, I've, you know, suffered from, you know, stress or, you know, with down to thing. Not so much in work, but it was definitely something that I had to deal with like, you know, well, I spoke the other day about my situation when I was, uh, you know, looking to go to university and I wasn't, wasn't looking like it was on the cards. I mean, back then I didn't have any tools to help me figure out, you know, what I needed to do to handle it. I didn't even really think about the idea of it being stressed because as far as I could see, this is just the situation that I'm in and it needs to be sorted out and maybe it won't. In fact, even though, like I said, you know, I took um, you know, I, I took steps to uh, sort out the situation, like sort of when I was worried about passing my physics A level. It sounds a bit like a suicide uh, plan, but I, uh, you know, I stopped revising maths and chemistry, and you know, just the fact that I'd taken some action that actually helped my stress level quite a lot. I mean, I know this now. I didn't know at the time. I was just basically lashing out and, you know, I don't know what I, don't know what I might have chosen to do. <laughs> but I was kind of lucky that, although it might not have been the best thing I could do, probably, but it, at least it was something that I could do and it was something that in the long term, it, it seems, you know, it's paid off. 
So even though that was the case, I, I managed to lower me, st me stress in the short term so that I could actually you know, get around to revising and stuff without you know, being totally panicked. But on the day of my first physics exam, when I was sitting down to take the test, and I remember it was, um, I think it was like, a levels. I don't. I don't. I've no idea what A levels are like now. So I'm talking back in 1994. So you know, who knows? Twenty. You know, it's thirty years ago. Like, oh, thirty years. So I had to do a multiple choice test. That was like the first bit. And I remember sitting down. I hadn't even turned over the page. It was you know you can start now. And I basically had a panic attack. And I was just like, my heart was beating out my chest. I felt like I couldn't breathe. It was just uh, not good. I'm not even sure I've ever really talked about this with anyone. So, the proverbial life flashed before my eyes. Because <clears throat> the whole situation that I was in, you know, I wanted to go and study physics. I had to, that was just, you know, that was just the only thing I was obsessed with. It was the only thing that I wanted to do. So, <laughs> and obviously, failing physics wasn't an option. But there I am, sat in the exam, having a panic attack. And so it did, you know, it occurred to me to just like call over a teacher, oh, excuse me, I'm having a panic attack. I mean, I didn't even know it was a panic attack. I know it's a panic attack now. I just thought, I don't know, I don't really know what I thought it was. I was just like, oh, maybe I'm not well. And then the thing that went through my head is, how's that going to help you? You know, maybe it would have been a way of saving face in the instant. Somehow, I don't know. Really thought that through, but all I knew was, you know, if I go and tell someone that I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not feeling well, maybe it'll get me out to sit in this exam right now, but it won't get me to university. And you know, then I'll have to explain, and you know, it's just... so I did the only thing that I could do. I just thought to myself. You know, there's no one here to calm me down. You're going to have to calm yourself down. And so I just, at the time, obviously I was, you know, I was 18. I wasn't doing meditation. I wasn't doing, you know, I wasn't even particularly, let's face it, when you're 18, what, what are you interested in? I mean, I was just into heavy metal and playing guitar and going out to the crazy house, which was a, like a rock club in Liverpool, which I think it's called something like that. And, you know, that, that's the only thing that I actually was particularly interested in. And the whole reason I wanted to go to university was because I thought, if I go to university and study physics is cool, I go to university. And then I'll probably get in a rock band, and then I'll, you know, obviously I'll do stuff that will be my life set. And it was all falling to bits, sat in this classroom, Taking an exam. So, I just, you know, what am I going to do? Well, I can't breathe, but I know how to breathe, so I'll breathe. And so I just, you know, sat still, breathed through a little bit, looked around to where everyone else was doing the exam, so I uh, turned over the page just so that I could look like I'm doing the exam. And I just sat there and breathed. Breathe really deep, breathe really slow, in through the nose, out through my mouth. Didn't know what I was doing, but I was just listening to what my body, you know, could do. And basically, I managed to calm myself down so that my heart wasn't beating out my chest. And I thought, look, you only need a day. That's what your offer is. Just do what you can. And if you don't get into university, well, you know, that, that's not something I can worry about right now. Just calm yourself down and sit your exams. 
So I managed to calm myself down. And then after about, you know, five to, I'm not really sure how, how long it took because time <laughs> didn't appear to be going in much of a linear manner in my head at, at that moment. And I just, you know, I got, I got through it. I sat the exam. So then, it just so happened that my physics exam was the first exam that I had to take out of all my A-levels. So lots of things were compounded. I was worried just in general about taking the, the exam. Nobody likes exams, let's face it. But I had, I'd never really been that worried about exams in the past because i have always been a good student and, you know, never had much trouble. But also, I never really felt like all that much was riding on it because I was just on what felt like the conveyor belt of education. So I was just, you know, go to school and you, well, 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 what's the next thing I've got to do? Oh, it's GCSEs, right, so I'll just do GCSEs. What's the next thing? Oh, A-levels, right, great, I'll do A-levels then. What's after that? Oh, university, right, I'll go to university. But it was the first time that like, me not achieving what I needed to get as the next prerequisite for the next step, that was the first time that I ever felt that it, I might not do it. And that was just like, oh, that was like a big deal for me. So that's why, you know, that's why I was getting, that's where the stress came from. That's where the panic attack came from. Because it was just something that I felt like I had no control over. But I did. So I had managed to change how I was going to revise, even though it probably wasn't the best work. I know. Let's face it, you did. Well, <laughs> I don't know what any of you guys were like when you were 18, but I was like just a well intentioned fool. I didn't really think about it, I was probably a bit of a tit, really more than a fool, but anyway. Um, and so I did what I could, I breathed. So it's like taking the smallest step in a situation that you feel is completely out of control. Taking the small step to say, I can do something about this, is exactly, was exactly what I needed. And since then, it's something that I've found is exactly what I try to do. So, you know, thinking another time, I think, I think I've only ever had like two panic attacks in my life. And another time was when I was, um, I was on, I was doing my PhD. And it was like a Monday morning or something, and I was sitting there at my experiment, and I had to do something. I, I just had to, you know, I think my supervisor told me, I'll oh, just, just go and work something out and then do this and do that. And I just sort of, like I kind of went blank. Like I didn't know what I had to do. And I was like, then like imposter syndrome set in with a vengeance and I was just like sitting there thinking you don't know what you're doing you shouldn't I don't know why you're on a PhD anyway you only got a D in physics you know you must have fluked getting through your your degree getting a 2-1 I don't know and it's just I just went to bits you know and I just I just said I just went to me super fast I, I don't feel well I need to go home and I just I was just like in a bad way. And it was just I was stress. And like it, I think it was like a, a culmination of a bunch of things because my mum died when I was uh, when I was twenty one. And I hadn't really dealt with it. It was like like my dad was a complete mess. You know, he really went to bits and like I I had to sort of help him through that and, and so I didn't really get any time to grieve, you know, I didn't, and, and to be honest, I'd start, like, years later, I'd, I'd start crying at, like, really weird moments, you know, just, like, it just hit me, and then I'd be, like, and then it'd just go away, and people would be thinking, what, what's it worth, and, you know, I wouldn't tell anyone or anything what it was all about, but, um, so, yeah, that, that's, like, I think that's what led me to, like, that situation of a panic attack, so, it's not, it, it's kind of a funny thing, how stress and it builds up and it, 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 it sort of like hides from you. 
you know, so it can just it can just strike like at the least opportune moment. So I mean, that's that's you know, I went to the doctor and everything because I was convinced that I was like just uh, obviously by then I was what twenty one or something, twenty two, twenty one, twenty two. Four year degree stuff when I was at twenty two, right? So um, you know, and at the time I was hoping that I'd get like some happy pills or something like that. So I can't, you know, I didn't know how to deal with it, and he just he basically gave me some counselling like that. I went to the university council and stuff like that, which was very nice talking about stuff. So that that was actually when I realised that, that that the problem, what that led me to the that panic attacks over PhD was just. The burden of like, you know, my mum having died, and you know, me looking after my dad, and I mean, I wasn't looking after him. He was going to work. He was getting through it, but you know, I, I felt like a big responsibility. Um, and so since then, I've been quite, you know, mindful of. What can happen if I don't keep stress under control? And so, you know, back then, you know, I, when I was doing my face there, I didn't have any responsibilities or anything. I was just, you know, it was just me. You know, I had a, I had a girlfriend, my now wife. You know, but you know, we hadn't been going on that long, and you know, I didn't really want to. You know, how how would she even know what to do? I don't, Anyway, so that's why I've I've really tried to make sure that I don't just I don't just like plow through life and not worry about getting stressed later. So <clears throat> there's a few things that that you need to like or that you can do if if you just when you're feeling the stress build up. So now I know, for instance, if I was to have a, like a panic attack or before that. I'd probably do some kind of breathing or like an EFT technique like tapping. So if you're interested in tapping, I don't know if I'll ever bother doing a video about it, but there's like thousands of videos on YouTube from like people who earn a living doing this type of thing. So, you know, listen to them. And it's, but basically the idea is there's certain points on your body that you, you can go through and, you know, do tapping and, you know, talk about, you, you bring out, the, uh, the, the the strong emotion that that's uh, that's getting you down, and by these te these techniques, you can feel your uh, hysteria going down. You know the, the unpleasantness goes down, <clears throat> and sometimes you just need to take the edge off. That's all you need. <clears throat> so there was a point in my um, in my career where I started a business. I you know a good project and stuff like that and it just got it got ended abruptly and uh, like one day to the next and I was just sort of no I had no employment no money was going to come in I had a mortgage so, you know there was a bunch of stuff that was going on in my life but I wasn't that stressed it was okay now five months later when I was still in the situation I was stressed and so with mine to sort out, um, you know, after lots of, you know, after like a couple of failed job interviews and stuff like that, I managed to um, get back in touch with a place that I had previously worked. So that thing about not burning your bridges, very important. So I got in... Uh, I was back, you know, I, I, you know I, was, I was living in Spain at the time, but they flew me over for like a pseudo interview. It wasn't really a much, it was like a formality, but I think, you know, uh, they wanted me to get up to speed, but you know, what they were doing, stuff like that was all great. Got given a project, you know, some, well, something to work on, like actionable immediately, like go downstairs, turn on your computer, start doing stuff type of thing, which was good. And it needed to be, there was a big, big demo going to happen, like on, on, like the next week or something. And I had to do something that was part of that. I mean, it wasn't a 
crucial part, but it was just a, a bit, you know, that I needed to do. It was something that I could do, and got that for myself. I'm downstairs, banging away. So I've only got like two days, and then I've got to go home, and on Monday I need to finish it off when I'm remote. And so I'm, you know, this is back in like 2015. Remote work, although uh, I'd done it before for them as well, but it wasn't like it is now. You know, the infrastructure was a bit flaky and, and stuff, and. Anyway, so I'm in the office and then I could feel, it's like, I need to get this done. I don't know how to do it. Um, I don't really know anyone here anymore because last time I worked here was like, I don't know, seven years ago or something. And I could feel it, boom, boom, boom. The stress was going up and then it was like, ah, this is what you feel like before you have a panic attack. But I was, I was under control. And so I just, you know, well, uh, when you work in an office and you don't have to ask anyone you need to go to the toilet. So I just got up, went over to the toilet, locked myself in the cubicle. I'm like, oh, what are we going to do? And by then I, 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 I knew about tapping. And so I just basically did a couple of rounds of tapping. I was prepared to sit there as long as I needed to, but it took less than five minutes. I got it all, you know, under control. I went back out and I just asked someone, oh, you know, can you have a look at this? It's like, uh, I haven't really done this before. And it, uh, and it was like, yeah, sure, Frank, come sit down. We did it, sorted out how to do it. Obviously, I had to go away and then do it, but it was all okay because I knew I'm not going to freak out. I've got it under control. I can just go back and do some more tapping if it's a problem. And that was it. You know, it was fine. So <clears throat> it's not just like to keep your stress under, it's not just, oh, you go and do tapping. It's like, no, see it coming. Realize that there's things that you can do to help. So in this case, it was tapping. In the exam, it was breathing. But it wasn't just tapping this time. It was like, you, you need to go and ask someone if you don't know what you're doing. Go and ask someone. No one's bothered. You know, it's fine, just go and ask, get help. And so when you're stressed about something, you know, take the edge off, bring down the immediate thing, and then think, come up with a plan. It might just be a one step plan. You know, the stuff about I need to ask someone for some help, that's it. You know, so I've just, one of the things I've been stressed about lately is like, oh, you know, the uh, lot of talk about, you know, financial, markets and things and you know I work in a se sector with you know software for companies that you know if, if they're if they're affected by a, you know an economic downturn maybe that will affect us just things like that <clears throat> and so I, start, I thought well you know what do we need to do to be prepared for this so obviously I'm not going to look for a different job because the job I'm in I like a lot and it's good but what else do we need? Well, I need to sort out, you know, what is, maybe I should start looking about, thinking about where I can cut back on expenditure now before I have to bite the bullets perhaps in the future. And so I just did the simplest things. You know, what are the things that I'm paying for right now? Oh, internet is this much. It's like, you know, do I need to pay that much? You know, maybe, so write it down. A look how I can you know, pay cheap for internet. I noticed just by accident that I my mobile uh, one bill that I use for work had gone up from twenty something euros to nearly fifty euros. I'm like, oh, what's that about? Got on the phone. Oh, sorry, yeah, you know, it's uh, after a certain amount of time it just goes up. And it's like, well, I've got no contract. Thanks for that. I'll go and look somewhere else. Oh no, don't do that. And now it's back down to where it was. So you know, just a few things. And I've just been going through and I'm looking at stuff where it's like, oh, maybe I don't need that. I don't think I need that. So although I'm not going to reduce my expenditure by half, but I'm trimming the fat on stuff. So, you know, just the fact that I've thought, right, I'm going to take some steps now to mitigate any future problems. It makes me feel better. I didn't have to go and tap about it because it's not like I'm not in an existential crisis about <gasps> yet. <laughs> if I lose my job, maybe I will. Be. But 
you know, just just taking some steps, having a think about what you need to do or what you can do, you know, what is available, that just makes you feel better. You know, so it's the whole thing of like I said at the beginning, you know, if you're in you don't want to be in fight or flight, you need to get out of that. And the way you get out of that is to have a plan. Like in because you're breaking the way that your your physiology is working. You know, the uh, the zebra when it sees a lion isn't thinking, right, well, what I need to do is step one. No, it's just like, ah, get out of here and run. So if you can, if, if your body's going, ah, I need to get out of here and run, and you go, no, let's have a plan. And that just breaks it up a bit. And, you know, it helps you just get stuff under control. Anyway, that's uh, my uh, two cents on it. I mean, obviously, if you are having, you know, if, if you're having problems, maybe you do need to go and get some counselling, because that helped me. You now, even though, I mean, I've never had any counselling since, but it is literally, maybe this is my counselling now, that I'm just getting stuff off my chest. You know, sometimes you just need to get stuff off your chest. You know, so talk to people, you know, you can... Find that people are more than willing to help, just to you know, just bounce ideas off people. But also, if you're in like a bad situation, do something about it. Don't just stew, because that's what I was doing. I was just stewing, was thinking, oh, you know, what happens if I lose my job? And, you know, it, I mean, like, I'll admit it right now. <laughs> if I lose my job, I'm in the shit. But you know, I'll. It's not something that I, you know, don't think I'll have to. Maybe I won't have to deal with that. But I've started doing things, and so it just makes me feel better. Anyway, I'm going on too much. My lunch is ready. So, like I said, I feel like I'm missing something. I didn't put any ginger in. It's too late now because it's ready. I like a bit of ginger. serve this up and show it to the camera maybe see if anyone cares. Oh I nearly got a little plate then. Make a big plate for this. Another thing that I'm thinking about just before we go is I can't I won't be doing these videos when my kids are about because they'll just be in and out and who are you talking to dad and who's this and you know, why are you doing this for dad and you know so, my kids will be off school on all day soon, so I won't be doing these videos. But, I'm thinking about maybe doing some other type of rant when I'm taking the dog out in the morning. But I don't really know I'm going to do that because I feel like a bit of a tit walking around with a selfie stick. But it'll be about 5 o'clock in the morning, so maybe it won't be such a problem because I won't see that many people. Although, I'm thinking about taking a different route because the people that I do see... I don't really want them to think that I'm the type of guy who'd walk around with a selfie stick doing the video. So, um, I don't know, maybe that's some kind of psychological thing that I need to deal with. Anyway, so, this is my lunch for today. I think it looks yummy. See you around. Have a good day.